3D printing is becoming more and more commonplace in the world around us. But what all can 3D printing be used for? Can I finally make the Iron Man suit I've been dying to make? What about 3D printing a Lamborghini? We'll cover all this and more in applications of 3D printing. Hi, my name is Kenny Rains and this is Rainmaker 3D. This is a part of my free course, Introduction to 3D Printing. Be sure to check out the other videos if you haven't already and subscribe to be updated on future videos. All videos used are linked in the description below. With all that said, let's check out five different applications of 3D printing. There are countless different applications that 3D printing can be used for, but I'm only looking at five of them today, and the five that I've chosen to look at are uses in the hobbyist market, prototyping and manufacturing, medical uses, architectural uses of 3D printing, and finally, how 3D printing is impacting the aerospace industry. So with that said, let's jump into the hobbyist usage of 3D printing. Our first usage case is what can you do with a 3D printer? And the way that we can tell this the easiest is by what have other people been doing with their 3D printers? And they've been doing a lot. Everything from 3D printing a Lamborghini, making Iron Man suits, the Pass the Butter robot from Rick and Morty. I've even 3D printed a prosthetic hand. I've made personalized gifts for friends and family. There's all sorts of different applications that you can have with just a regular everyday 3D printer. So with that said, let's take a look at a few videos that show just what people are up to in the hobbyist market of 3D printing. <music> Thank you. What is my purpose? You pass battle. Oh my god. I find it absolutely incredible what people with enough imagination are able to do with these tools. And so with that said, we'll take a look at our next step, which is prototyping manufacturing. Now, I have used my 3D printer for all sorts of different things. Everything from printing off a prosthetic to uh, prototyping a solar powered wireless automated irrigation system. I actually won the Arkansas Governor's Cup with and a dog wheelchair. 
I used uh, my 3D printer to prototype that. So th there have been many different times that I've been able to use my 3D printer for prototyping ideas that I have and trying to come up with new things. And we've got some clips that we look at coming up with that. And then also people have even used their 3D printers in responding to this COVID crisis that we happen to find ourselves in in 2020 and making PPE equipment. And so we'll take a look at a video of how makers responded and used their 3D printers to quickly be able to produce volumes of PPE. And there's all sorts of other applications where 3D printers are now starting to scale into the mid and high volume range of production. So with that said, let's take a look at some clips. This is the cyborg hand. So I uh, printed this out for my buddy. He can't move his fingers, but he can move his wrist. So he puts this on his left hand, and when he moves his wrist down, the fingers close. And when he lets go, the fingers return back to normal. Normally, our videos start with an insanely big idea, and then we trim away the fat until we end up with a reasonable one. This was the exact opposite. Our original goal was to build about 100 face shields, donate them, and then hand the reins over to our community. But at every step in this project, people have stepped up to donate time, money, or materials, and we are now able to produce around 300 masks per day. We've got this massive local effort, and by the time this video is over, we're gonna let you guys know how to help. This right here is what we plan on making, 3D printed face shields. So there's two parts that need to be printed. The headband, got a bunch of headbands here, as well as the chin piece. Together, these hold a laser cut piece of PEDG that acts as the face shield, and then an elastic holds the whole thing in place on your face. In our next three use cases, we start to move away from what can you do with your 3D printer in your own home into what is possible with 3D printing. And with that said, we'll hop into medical applications. And in the medical field, there are all sorts of different advancements being made. Everything from printing off organs to manufacturing prosthetics, uh, as well as volume manufacturing of dental implants, and also uh, being able to make molds uh, for products such as Invisalign braces that are customized to every single set that your, your teeth have to go through in order to be corrected as well as medical devices and so that said let's take a look at some clips that show off the medical uses of 3d printing but there are nearly two million people in the u.s who are living without a limb and prosthetic devices typically really expensive they can cost up to eighty thousand dollars but this device could be a game changer right now as you can see i have a nice tan and my arm's a little lighter, so <laughs> during the winter time, it'll probably match me a little bit better. That's Jenny Mall. She's one of the first people to receive a true limb robotic arm from Unlimited Tomorrow. It's a prosthetic arm that's nearly entirely 3D printed. And maybe more importantly, it's extremely customizable, meaning it's more comfortable and less noticeable. Unlimited Tomorrow designed its process from the ground up to change the way prosthetics are designed, fit, and manufactured. So here's how it works. It starts with a questionnaire on the company website to determine if a person is a good candidate. And if they are, the company sends them a 3D scanner to scan their limb. That data gets sent back to the company, which can also collect info on the candidate's opposite hand if they have one. They can then use those images to design a completely customized robotic hand right down to the fingernails. Most of the parts are printed on HP 3D color printers, which allow for about 450 skin tones right now. The whole process can vary. Generally, it takes around two weeks between scanning and delivery. What you may or may not have noticed here is this is a direct-to-consumer approach. It takes out any middlemen. It's the same thing with what kind of smile. Digital orthodontics are affordable and available to everybody. We probably make around about 8,000 retainers a month. About 1,200 of those will be done digitally now. Some aspects of the job are more accurate and can be done quickly via digital techniques. The whole system of digital technology allows us to take files from the cloud, print them, even send them out directly to the patient. The workflow is actually quicker and it can be at the practice within 48 hours from scan. When people realize that 
what we're providing here is very good quality. They trust us to send us the more complex appliances. At the moment it's traditional techniques with a little bit of digital. In a matter of two or three years it's going to be digital techniques with a little bit of traditional. 3D printing gives us so much potential going forward. It's actually it's, it's bigger than we ever thought it would be and I think that will be the driving force for our department to keep on growing. They used a technique called stereolithography apparatus for tissue engineering, or SLATE. It's an open source bioprinting technology that uses additive manufacturing to create soft hydrogels layer by layer by using light from a digital projector. So this is a light-based polymerization system. So we have a light-sensitive liquid that when you shine the right color of light at the right intensity of energy, the right number of photons hit that sample you can convert that liquid into a solid only in that region. But using light also created some issues since the light could get into previously solidified layers, thus disrupting the intended pattern. To address this, the team searched to find an element that could block light and that was biocompatible. And the winner was food dye. These biocompatible food additives that all of us are eating all the time anyway, we already know that they're biocompatible, they're compatible with live cells and they can be used as potent photoabsorbers to block the light penetrating previous layers, getting us our complex architecture. The food dyes were able to confine the solidification to a thin layer, creating the desired internal structures. In the end, these tissues proved to be sturdy enough to withstand blood flow and pulsating breathing, the rhythm that mimics the pressures and frequencies of how we breathe. So this model may be tiny, but it's just the beginning for Jordan and his team. They plan to make more complex designs and scale them up. And in the spirit of team- An application that's on the rise in 3D printing is the usage in the construction industry. And that includes everything from customizing the inside of a home with custom furniture and light fixtures, all the way to manufacturing and printing off homes and structures. So we've got a few clips where we look at some different videos of printing homes as well as uh, 3D printing a very cool RGB uh, light fixture. So let's take a look. 3D printers can print two-story buildings now. What's next? Windmills? <laughs> swimming pools? <laughs> what's that? Windmills and swimming pools are what's next? Let's get into it. Elgin company Camp C recently finished construction on its first 3D printed two-story house. The two-story house was printed by a machine called the BOD2 from a company called Cobod, which is short for Construction of Buildings on Demand. It's a little bit like the little uh, 3D plastic printers. They enlarge it and they feed it with concrete and then you have a big concrete 3D printer. The house was built in just 15 days of print time, but those 15 days were spread out over several months in order to accommodate the school schedules of the students working on the project. fifth and final usage case brings us to the aerospace industry and so we're going to take a look at how 3d printing is being used in the manufacturing of airplanes uh, as well as how rockets are being manufactured and finally how future humans may live on mars in 3d printed structures so let's take a look at some different clips 
the machine that we were using down at Oak Ridge National Labs had a 20 foot bed and it was 10 foot wide. So we were looking for something that would fit that framework. So we went to the 777X team and we said we need a demonstration part for this technology. They said, here you go, 777X folding wingtip skin. And we said, okay, we'll take that on. It was done at the Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory, saving energy, time, labor, and production costs. One of the obstacles that we had to overcome was the pure size. So when you're looking at uh, laying down layers of material to build the additive component, there's a certain amount of time that you have to go back over the top of a previous layer to get the adhesion that you're looking for. Otherwise, you don't get the bond and then you lose your mechanical properties, so you'll lose your build. Making the tool using traditional manufacturing methods would have taken about three months. Using 3D printing, it only took 30 hours, but even as it was printing, Matlack says, they didn't really know if printing the tool would actually work. Nobody was positive. It was, uh, nobody knew going into this that we were gonna have success. Uh, the 777X program was counting on us because they didn't have a tool planned for this particular part. So we had to have success. We found a way to make it work. And so they did. Weighing in at 1,650 pounds, measuring 17 and a half feet long, five and a half feet wide, and one and a half feet tall, it is the largest solid 3D printed object in the world. Uh, but again, you're building near net shape, so you're not using as much material. You're not buying a block of Inconel or a block of titanium and machining down and wasting a bunch of material. So you're doing finished machining, fine tuned machining, very little parts uh, are very little materials wasted. Now, do your customers, do they, uh, do they know, do they optimize the design for additive or are they bringing you parts which are regularly designed for subtractive and saying, please 3D print this? In a lot of ways, they're bringing us parts that are already being designed for conventional. Um, they are now redesigning parts uh, for additive. So that they are building parts with uh, things of the structure where you're changing the whole shape so that you can build these parts in the layer process as opposed to trying to uh, do any uh, secondaries afterwards. Now, this is aluminum. It, uh, what sorts of materials typically do you work with at Encodum? Uh, Inconel, stainless steel, titanium, cobalt chrome, uh, Hastelloy, uh, many, many different materials. Okay, those materials you described, some are refractory. Uh, you mentioned some super alloys in there. Uh, you also mentioned some products, I think, of some uh, medical applications, for example. But is aerospace, would that be a major market? Aerospace is our major market, yeah. We are 95% we are aerospace uh, focused. Now, it's in aerospace, of course, it's um, uh, engines in particular expensive the hot section is really expensive a lot of investment casting you know yes. a lot of a lot of tricky stuff and then you a lot of post machining at the same time is this technology going to work its way into the hot section are we going to see uh, um, you know fully dense sort of ink canal turbine blades on a mass production basis we are and and they are there so we are doing parts right now where we actually have parts test fired by nasa uh test fired by uh, companies like aerojet um for you know with the technology using the uh, the alloys that you discussed uh, but aerospace is grabbing this because it's, it's, it is difficult to make a lot of these parts in casting uh, or anything that's an assembly. So once they get into multiple pieces and they're doing raised welding, um, ultrasonic welding, they want to avoid that and get away from that redesign and use additive so they can build these parts wholly, you know, holistically in one piece. This window, we have less than 30 seconds to place it. It is down to the wire. I could not have scripted this better. You're the guy? I'm the guy. <laughs> okay. Started? All right. We are starting. We are starting. Uh, two penetrations place that we need to do on the first day, which is the uh, small window and the hatch, the uh, rover hatch. Dude. Seconds to place it. 
It is down to the wire. I could not have scripted this better. I hope this video got your mind racing on what's possible with 3D printers, how they're currently being used, and how you might be able to use them in your own household or business. So with all that said, I hope that you'll also check out some of our other videos, including types of different 3D printers, the history of 3D printing, and the future of 3D printing, and finally, just our entire introduction to 3D printing course. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you soon for watching the video be sure to press the like button if you learned anything or enjoyed the video and also smash that subscribe button for more tips tricks tutorials and time lapses